Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the latest Lineage OS 21 based on Android 14 onto OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to install the Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools as you could see. Once that is done, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB commands, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu, then go to about device and go to version and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now in developer mode. So go back, again go back, then go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get an RC key prompt as well. In that case, tap on allow. And with this debugging is enabled. Likewise, also make sure that you have selected file transfer via USB from here. So once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. For that, go to the platform to folder address bar. Type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Once that is done, now type on ADB devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that it will wipe off all the data and could make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could then refer to my guide or the video and get this job done. In short, simply boot your phone to fastboot mode and then use the fastboot flashing unlock command. You will then get a prompt on your phone. Use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, the bootloader will be unlocked and you will then be taken back to the OS. From there, re-enable USB debugging and then let's proceed ahead. So now you'll have to get hold of the ROM file and the gapps. Gapps is optional. Whereas, let me show you the ROM files. So over here, you will get the following following files. Make sure to get hold of all the files. Even if it might not require some of the files, still get hold of all the files from here. And once you have got the files, you will have to transfer the files to the platform to folder on your PC. So let's get that job done. First off, let me transfer all the IMG files. So just a minute. These are the files of Lineage OS. So let's rename it as well exactly how it was. So it will be vendor boot.img. Then the next one will be vbmeta.img. This renaming might not be required in your case. If you only have a single file, I had multiple files. That is why I have numbers next to each file name. I am simply removing those numbers so that the naming scheme is remains the same across all the guides. And with this, we have done the rename. So as of now, I have all the five IMG files inside the platform to folder. Once that is done, you will also have to transfer the ROM and the G apps if you have one to the platform to folder as well. So re regarding the G apps, you could go to my guide and from here, you could download the G apps of your choice. As of now, I am using the, let me show you, I'm using the next G apps, which is here. In next G apps, you have quite a few versions to choose from. With the basic one being the core G apps, then you have the basic G apps, then Omni, then stock, then full G apps. So as of now, I'm using the core G apps, which have the least number of Google apps, just the required number of apps, which are required to run the Google Play service and Play Store. So as of now, using the core G apps, you may use the one which correspond to your requirement. So make sure to get hold of the G apps if you want, then transfer both the G apps and the ROM file to the platform to folder as well. So let's do that and once again, let's rename them to something shorter so that it becomes easier to type in CMD window. In case of GSI file, let's just rename it to GSI and the complete name becomes GSI.zip. In case of the lineage file, let's rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. So as of now, we have the five IMG files, the partition files, the GSI, which is optional and the ROM zip file all inside the platform to folder. Once you've done that as well, Let's move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. So for that, you just have to type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. 
and your phone should not board into fast boot mode in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and then we'll move ahead with the next step. Once your phone boots into the fast boot mode, let's now verify the fast boot connection as well. For that, type in fast boot devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fast boot drivers. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and get the job done. Once you have installed the drivers, right click on the windows icon and select device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So one more important aspect is that as of now for flashing the Lineage OS Android 14 ROM you will have to be on the Android 13 firmware. Yes you heard that right you will have to be on the Oxygen OS 13 firmware and not the Oxygen OS 14. So if you are currently on Oxygen OS 14 then you will have to do a downgrade. Regarding that there are quite a few ways through which you could do a downgrade. I have made a separate guide on the same. So if you talk about our OnePlus 9 or the OnePlus 9 Pro, then you could either use the official method, which is which involves simply doing a local install, or you may also use the fastboot ROM. As of now, since the bootloader is currently unlocked, I will highly recommend you to use the fastboot method because it is a much easier and comes at a higher success rate. In some cases, the local install might cause a few issues in case of downgrade. That is why I will recommend you to use the fastboot method because the only requirement in case of fastboot is an unlock bootloader and we have already done that. So with that said, you may now get hold of the OnePlus 9 Pro or the OnePlus 9 fastboot ROM. So in case of OnePlus 9 Pro, you have the Android 13 fastboot ROM. Simply get hold of that. But in case of OnePlus 9, we only have the Android 11 fastboot ROM. So you could either use the local install in that case or you could flash the Android 11 fastboot ROM and then directly install the Android 13 ROM using the Oxygen Updater app as well. So there are two approaches. In case of OnePlus 9 Pro, simply flash the Android 13 fastboot ROM. In case of OnePlus 9, first flash the Android 11 fastboot ROM, then install the Oxygen Updater app from Play Store and directly install the Android 13 app or Android 13 firmware. If that does not work out, then get hold of the Android 13 firmware and do a local install. You may download the Android 13 firmware from this guide as well. For instance, it's the official. So let me show you. You may go to this guide and get hold of the Android 13 downgrade firmware as well from here. And this is for the OnePlus 9 Pro. This is for the OnePlus 9. Get hold of the downgrade firmware and do a downgrade using local install. Once that is done. So in case of fastboot method, let me show you. This is the fastboot ROM. Extracted fastboot ROM. This is the one in my case. And you simply have to use the batch file. It will be either install.bat or the flash all.bat or some, something like that. Simply execute the batch file. It will flash all the files. And then you will be on the Android 13 firmware. In my case, I'm already on the Android 13 firmware. So once you are on Android 13, you could then move ahead and flash the ROM file. So let's now move ahead with the next step. I have linked all the downgrade firmwares and guides in my guide as well. You could refer to my guide and get that job done as well. So anyways, once you've done the downgrade using this guide, let's now get started with the flashing process. So first and foremost, you will have to wipe the super partition via the super empty IMG file. If you don't do so, then you may get an error applying update 7. You will get an error something along the following lines while doing an ADB side load. Error applying update 7. That is why it's recommended that you do a wipe of super partition. For that, simply copy this entire command and paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. Once that is done, you will now have to flash the DTBO file to its partition. So again, copy the command and paste it in the CMD window. Once that is done, you will now have to flash the vendor boot file. So let's copy paste that file as well. Let's now flash the VBMeta file as well. After that, you could now flash the recovery file. Since our phone does not have a recovery partition, we'll use the boot partition to flash the recovery file. So simply copy this entire command now and we are flashing the lineage OS recovery to the boot partition which will take up to a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. And then we could reboot our phone to the recovery via the fast boot reboot recovery command. So it will take a few seconds and once that has been flashed, simply use this command and our phone will now reboot into the lineage OS recovery which will again take only a few seconds. 
so once that happens your first course of action is to do a format data so as you can see we are inside the recovery so now you will have to go to factory reset select format data factory reset and select format data do note that it will wipe off all the data from your phone including the internal storage as well so make sure you have taken a backup beforehand if that's well and good just tap on format data and it will remove all the data from your phone once that is done you will get a data wipe complete message so let's now proceed ahead with the next step so you will now have to go to the adb side load mode so go back to the home screen then select apply update and choose apply from adb and with this your phone is now in the adb side load mode let's verify the same so type in adb devices and hit enter and make sure that you're getting the side load keyword once you get in the side load keyword you could now side load the rom file in our case the name of the file is rom.zip so the command will be adb side load rom.zip and hit enter and the side loading will now start it could take up to around 10 minutes for that to happen so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys as soon as the flashing is complete you will get a prompt on your phone asking if you want to flash any other zip file or not so if you want to flash any other zip file then tap on no and then select reboot to system on the other hand if you want to flash a zip file or you want to flash any other recovery or any other mod file then you will have to tap on yes so in my case i have to flash a uh, gf packages again i am repeating gifs this gfs is optional so only flash if you want in my case i want to flash a gf so i am tapping on yes so my phone will now reboot to the linux os recovery if you don't want to flash any other zip file then just tap on no and select reboot system now and your phone will then boot to the new newly flashed os in my case since i want to flash gfs i have chosen the other option and my phone will now reboot to the linux os recovery and once that happens again go to apply update and choose apply from adb and with this our phone is now in the adb side load mode so we could now side load the gsi file so let's get that job done as well so if you get an adb fail to read command no error this is completely normal and nothing to worry about apart from that you might also see one of the following errors as well so all these five messages signify the same thing that the flashing has been done successfully it's not a cause of concern anyways moving on let's now side load the gfs file so type in adb side load and the name of the file which is gfs.zip in our case and the side loading will now start and depending on the gfs package that you have chosen the flashing will take some time in my case it's the core gfs with just the basic packages so while you are flashing the gfs packages you will get a prompt signature verification failed in that case you will have to tap on yes you are getting this warning message only because this package is not a part of lineage os so if you flash any zip file which is not a part of lineage os you will get this warning message whether it's the g apps the magisk zip or any other zip file if it's not a part of lineage you will get this prompt so just tap on yes and it will then flash the rest of the gf packages and will take up to a few seconds or minutes depending on the package which you have used so i have just used the smallest and the core g apps but only a few apps so it will flash and install those apps and once that is done it will show you the result when once that is done it will show you that as well so in my case the flashing is now complete and you will get install complete with status 0 as you could see from here so once that is done you if you want to flash any other zip file then again go to advance and select reboot to recovery and get the job done via adb side load but if you don't want to flash any other zip then just tap on reboot system now and your phone will now reboot into the newly flashed os do keep in mind that the first boot up might take up some additional time frame this is completely normal and nothing to worry about so let's just wait for the boot animation to show up which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and it should be there within 5 to 10 seconds and as you could see it's the newly revamped boot animation of lineage os it has undergone a change after ages so let me show you the new boot animation as well usually i skip this portion but since it's a new boot animation of lineage os let's check out how this looks and then we'll see so the brightness has just let up in the three circles let me focus it and well it was great to see and we are back with the lineage os home screen 
and as of now i'll quickly skip the setup process and take you to the os let me accept terms and condition and skip the rest of the stuffs and skip this as well if you want you may do a restore right away as of now i'm doing a skip so just a navigation is well and good and let's start so guys with this we are inside the lineage os 14 rom and as you might be aware it's just the bare minimum rom with just the bare features and these are the apps so one change this is the settings menu and from here let me show you i'm using the oneplus 9 pro and it's the latest android 14 version with the minimum features some features let me show you so as you might be aware in android 14 we have a clock styles as well so clock color and size so it's the default clock color change apart from that you have a few home screen theme icons as well then app grade you could increase the app grade size till 6 cross 6 that good to see then you have the app icons these are the few app icons inside the lineage os let's change it and see then apart from that we have the font style as well and the icon shapes you could change the icon shape from here next up are a few lock screen tweaks as well so you could add the device shortcuts to the left and right of the lock screen then apart from that there are a few additional tweaks on the lock screen and ambient display and all such stuff so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching